I'm going to make ramen with 20 egg whites. Um, so uh, I've been in a quarantine for about two, almost two weeks now, and I've been practicing combat fitness for about four or five hours a day. If I could use one metaphor to describe quote unquote enlightenment or awakening or whatever bullshit word that you want to dub to this natural state. Um, have you seen that movie uh, Enter the Void where the main character gets shot but he was just like floating um, as a void in the atmosphere and that's why it feels like somebody shots you in the head you die for a second you know the death is equivalent to uh, the state of the non-state that belongs to no one or of secession or nirvana nirvana which again means to blow out uh, to become extinct so life goes on everything is just happening all by itself without a center, without a witness to the experience, without the watcher, the perceived and the perceived, um, that duality collapse. He's dwelling in luminosity and divine creation, moment by moment. And the mind literally becomes as vast as the sky. The body and the world are the somewhat something clouds moving and morphing, dreamlike, on a fading road. SexyPeckerCutShort.com Now let's look up some YouTube videos for some awesome chest workout! Another thing that I realized during this forest retreat was that every contemplative fitness exercises, if done correctly, including uh, self-inquiry yoga, vipassana, Chen is that they all lead to the same place just like every religion we're talking about the same thing before they were corrupted by dogmas and ideologies the Buddha mind Christ consciousness for example doing self inquiry is asking what you are what am I and then whatever arises in your mind you just say not this not that natty 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 it's only when nothing is you that everything is we get really deep with this when only awareness or consciousness remains. You do the same thing, you say not this, not that. A lot of people get stuck when they find refuge or like a safe landing place. Emptiness is also empty. So what can be observed cannot be the observer, this including yourself. This insight collapses both sides of the duality between the observed and the observed. And when you wake up after the death of a separate self, that's what Jesus calls the afterlife. Muscles. Hey, so guys, this is Mike Chang with six pack shortcuts. Yes, Mike. Right. Come in. Yes. Press. Press. And then do a pull over. Oh like. fuck! This heavy as fuck, man. Yeah. Press. <laughs> Fucking safe. Without that center point, without the doer, the agent that's you know controlling things. Life is 98% more freedom. Everything just bursting in and out of emptiness, taking form momentarily and decombust to return to the source of formlessness. The eyes aren't seeing anything, the ears aren't hearing any sounds. There's thinking, but no thinker. There's hearing but no hear, there's seeing but no seer. The meat suit was never alive. The body mire is just another thought, another figment of the imagination within God's infinite mind. The idea that thoughts and perceptions are processes occurring inside the head or the brain is another thought. And every experience within the past and the future are all codependently arising, co-created with each other and collapsing in the now. Hi, Matt, your, your workout is over. And when you look out into the world, it's not a person that's looking out, it's using the metaphor of peeling the onion to describe this 
this journey. The last layer that gets dissolved is the witness. The escape the observer's trap. Even though it's very subtle, the witness, just like the sense of the self, is just a cluster of solidified sensations that are congealing in the middle of your experience that's taking credit for quote unquote infinite consciousness. It's a whole universe knowing itself. And every time there's solidity in experience, even just perceiving an object as solid, instead of just holographic projections, is a form of grasping, clinging, that leads to suffering. So the virus could be perceived as deconstructing and dissolving form, the materialism that gives rise to modern society. The way that consciousness dissolves the body during Vipassana practice. So the virus could be seen as a response from mother nature to the hyper-capitalist, hyper-rational, hyper-technological uh, regime that we have today, which is totally uh, fragmented. And the virus, in a paradoxical way, sort of brings all that together as a, a new common ground for the world to connect with. But it's done through a sense of isolation, through social distancing and, uh, you know, in the enactment of uh, borders. But then the world is still connecting with uh, digital technology like the internet. So you see this push and pull uh, paradoxical duality that is, at the end, non-dual. Even if you argue that the virus is man-made, it's still part of nature. Everything that exists or arises is part of nature's uh, unfoldment. This whole thing just got me imagine an alternative universe where uh, instead of a virus epidemic like Corona, it's a consciousness epidemic. Once this epidemic begins, people are going to wake up in the morning and they're going to be like, what the fuck is going on? Why is my awareness no longer confined in my head? Why is, why is my sense of self? I honestly feel sorry for Donald Trump, actually. The way that I perceive humans, I don't see them as individuals anymore. Every individual is just a process. Whatever word that I utter right now is the result, co-dependent, co-arising, co-interactive unfoldment with everything else that's also undergoing the same butterfly effect Brad Pitt in Fight Club said that to make an omelette, you need to break some eggs. But to break an egg... Now one particle can be misaligned. Just like a word in the dictionary is only definable through the means and the definition of other words, which are also dependent on the definition of a million other words. And each one of those words is utterly empty in and of itself. See, that's another way to perceive emptiness. Buddha was um, seeing images of um, reincarnation. And I think that's really what it means. Every object, every person, every event is the reincarnation of the entire universe from the beginning of time to the end of time that's all collapsing in the event horizon in the security of the now this is the insight of dependent origination the last vision before the buddha's final awakening